All right. It is Monday, October 1st, 2018, 1.24 p.m. Let's take a look at some headlines. All right. Indonesia earthquake and tsunami desperate search for survivors. A picture of a large-scale destruction is emerging in and around the Indonesian city of Palu after an earthquake and tsunami struck on Friday. At least 844 people are confirmed to have died, but that figure is expected to rise sharply as more remote areas are reached. The authorities have said that it, they will begin burying victims in mass graves, fearing disease could begin to spread. Dozens of people are thought to be trapped alive under the rubble. In Palu, rescuers are waiting heavy, for heavy machinery to search the ruins of a hotel and a shopping center as aftershocks made it unsafe for them to go in. Communication is limited. Heavy, heavy machinery is limited. It is not enough for the numbers of buildings that collapsed, said Sutopo Purwo, a spokesman for the National Disaster Mitigation Agency. All right, guys, that is really something sad to hear. 844 people have passed away, and they're thinking of burying them in mass graves. That's just hard to, to hear. It really is. Please pray for the people in Indonesia going through this stuff. It's kind of hard. All right, next, Typhoon Trami. Powerful storm hits Japan, killing two. Two people have been killed after a powerful typhoon struck Japan. Typhoon Trami made landfall on Sunday at, at 20 uh, local time or 11 GMT near the western city of Osaka with gusts of up to uh, 134 miles an hour. The storm caused widespread disruption with many flights and trains canceled. More than 750,000 homes lost power. At least 120 people were injured. The typhoon came less than a month after the country's strongest storm in 25 years hit western Japan. Typhoon Jebi caused widespread flooding and at least seven deaths in early September. After Trami made landfall, one person was killed by a landslide in Totori, western Japan, and another drowned in Yamanashi, west of Tokyo, public broadcaster NHQ said. Two more people were reported missing and more than 120 were injured, officials were quoted as saying. Wow, so another typhoon uh, for Japan. There have been a couple uh, lately. Uh, it hasn't been an easy hurricane season for them in Japan. All right, next. Pennsylvania car explosion kills three, prompting FBI investigation. The fire was crazy, resident Carlos Perodin said. The car was pretty much split in half. Allenton, Pennsylvania. A car exploded on a city street, killing several people and, landing to, and leading to a shelter in place order for nearby residents. The federal authorities are helping local officials in the investigation. The blast happened in Allentown around 9.30 p.m. Saturday, Assistant Police Chief Gail Struss said early Sunday. On Sunday, uh, Lake County Coroner Scott Grimm said the blast killed three men. During a press conference on Sunday, Lee County District Attorney James B. Martin said, We have a higher degree of confidence that the perpetrator was probably killed in the accident. Tony Asblum, chief of the police and the Allentown Police Department, said that the incident was isolated and there was no further threat to the public. Resident Carlos Perudin told the morning call of Allentown that he was watching a movie with his wife when he heard a thunderous explosion and went to the scene. The fire was crazy, he said. The car was pretty much split in half. A bus station was turned into a makeshift command center with armored vehicles, dozens of police cruisers, mobile command units, and even portable bathrooms, the paper reported. Several portable tents were also erected for evidence processing. Residents were asked to avoid the area, and people who lived nearby were asked to shelter in place. A shelter was set up in an elementary school. Uh, the FBI said on Twitter that it was working on other agencies and to assess the situation and determine the cause, with public safety the Bureau's highest priority. Alright, so hopefully they figure out why the car exploded, killing three people. Alright, next, Chicago blues guitarist Otis Rush, dead at 84. He was the architect of Chicago's West Side Sound in the 1950s and 60s. Legendary Chicago blues guitarist Otis Rush, whose passionate jazz-tinged music influenced artists from Carlos Santana 
and Eric Clapton to the rock band Led Zeppelin died Saturday at the age of 84, his longtime manager said. Rush succumbed to complications from a stroke he suffered in 2003, manager Rick Bates said. Born in Philadelphia, Mississippi, Rush settled in Chicago as an adult and began playing the local clubs, wearing a cowboy hat and sometimes strumming his guitar upside down for effect. He catapulted to international fame in 1956 with his first recording on Crowbar Records of I Can't Quit You Baby, which reached number 6 on the Billboard Board R&B charts. He was a key architect of the Chicago West Side Sound in the 1950s and 60s, which modernized traditional blues to introduce more of a jazzy, amplified sound. He was one of the last great guitar heroes. He was an electric god, said Greg Parker, CEO and founder of the Chicago Blues Museum. Alright guys, hopefully he rests in peace, his family, pray for his family, and let's pray for this entire situation of news from Indonesia to a typhoon in Japan and from car explosion in Pennsylvania. Let's pray for all these people. All right, guys. God bless and stay safe.